Um, as said by Michaela, I'm here today to introduce you uh, to the new HB1C uh, GCB. Um, so this is before starting just to guide you through what will be my slides today, what will be the content of my slides so you can have some kind of overview where I'm trying to, to bring you in to go the journey with me. Um, so at first I will just give you a, for, a quick overview what Siemens is doing in the, let's say in the work in the field of GCB, much more on the side of the product rather than the side of the technology, because this item has been already introduced by my two colleagues, Fabian and Hong. Then I will introduce much more in detail, let's say, the performance and the unique selling point or the unique features I would assume that our HB1 have to bring to the market. And then especially as the HB1C is aiming to the retrofit and replacement market, I will guide you through um, two business cases where our HB1C was kind of uh, best solution, best answers for the concern of our, let's say, partners. And then finally, um, wrapping up the session with some kind of key takeaways that I would like you to take with you when we are closing this uh, webinar. Uh, but first, before starting about the product itself, I would like to bring myself quickly so you know more about me. Um, so my name, as you can see here, is Edouard Desplanches. I'm responsible so far in Siemens about the generator circuit breakers portfolio, meaning that my duty is to be sure that the product we are delivering to the market or we are offering to the market is uh, matching the market requirement, whether it's in terms of performance, in terms of quality, or in terms of lead time delivery, for example. So it's very important for us at Siemens to have a portfolio which is quite consistent and offering the most of our own technology, which I will come up later on, to the customers. Um, in these specific fields of general circuit breaker application, I'm working in this field around like 16 years. Um, in various positions, starting from sales to BD and now as a portfolio manager. So I'm quite happy to be there in front of you today to introduce and speak with you about our hg one And please feel free to ask as many questions as you want about uh, the breaker itself. It was a pleasure for us to introduce this breaker at Enlit last year. We had already kind of a good feedback and direct interaction with our yeah, possible customers and, and people interested in the development. And being there today, again, it's a way for me to open once more the discussion with you. So please feel free to, to ask as many questions as you have. Okay, um, before stepping in the HB1C and a particular part of our portfolio, I would like to bring a few, um, let's say, yeah, background of uh, Siemens General Circuit Baker's story and where we come from, where we are. So the vacuum interruption in Siemens is a very yeah, well-known and improved technology um, Siemens itself is using uh, vacuum interruption technology, has a general circuit breakers or within a general circuit breakers since more than 40 years. So it's a well proven technology for, for us, which is widely accepted on the market nowadays, um, mainly from the medium voltage um, systems. If you look at all the GIS or AIS, uh, medium voltage criteria, you will see that vacuum is almost covering 95% of the technology used and using it in, in GCVs and makes a lot of sense. Um, this is also reflected, but as you can see, our install base, so more or less, I would say, as Hong mentioned, we have almost 4,000, let's say 3.8 thousand uh, GCB installed worldwide in various countries, which are currently protecting almost 80 gigawatts of power uh, production. So that's really also proving how strong in our install base and how much of, um, let's say, partnership uh, are we getting with, with our customers, let's say. Uh, then on the other side, as you will see, I will introduce the portfolio we have. We are already having a portfolio which is standardized as much as we can, really trying to compete on the market to bring also a competitive solution, not only on the performance to the market, but also it's important for us to be able to customize the product we have. So we are really matching all customers' uh, demand. And especially for that, I mentioned here in this slide that we have almost every year, we are delivering almost 500 customized solutions to the market, really supporting our customers to define as much as we can and support them as much as we can in their challenge, which is how they can protect their uh, very important asset as much as they want. A very important part where we come about uh, speaking about vacuum technology is um, the OPEX saving. So I will come back later on during the presentation, but one of the main yeah, aspect of using uh, vacuum technology coupled with a full spring drive mechanism is really to be able to provide to our customers a solution which is maintenance free over the lifetime and 
by being maintenance-free, it really helps them to reduce their operational expenditures or their maintenance requirement. And what you can see from, from this slide here is we are also doing the same as Hong and Fabian are doing on the short circuit simulation. We are also um, running some uh, life cycle cost estimation or simulation, trying to compare what are the savings our customers can expect by using vacuum and full spring over different quenching technology. And, and these values and figures of 75% is like an average for us. Um, again, here, if you have any, any requirement or any needs for us to support you in this direction, to say, okay, if I go with Siemens, what would be my benefit? That's where we can also answer you further than uh, just on the technical side with a short circuit simulation. And the last two points I will come on with is um, digitalization. So um, being a part of the big Siemens family here, of course, we are trying to use uh, the best product from our colleagues and Ciprotec and Asset Guard are two uh, major, let's say, yeah, piece of um, protection and protection relay, which is used widely worldwide. So we are also, of course, uh, integrating those digitization devices within our GCB. On one side, to use them as a live I mean, condition monitoring system, which is allowing our customers to access on real time what is else um, index or the status of their GCB. And on the other side, we are also pushing this uh, forwards to also going much more into the protection scheme and, and trying to include the GCB as a smart piece of equipment within the power plant. And the last point before, before going further with the HP1C itself is um, the vacuum technology. So as most of you most yeah, knows, I would say vacuum is uh, always coming from the minimum voltage and most of um, the say, colleagues on the market are providing vacuum technology up to 63, sometimes 72 kA, sometimes 75 kA. But I would say today at Siemens, we are very proud to have been able in the past to, let's say, push it to one of the most performant vacuum technology, vacuum interrupters we have today. And this today is 110 kA. And that's also uh, yeah, showing to the market that this technology can do even, even more. We, we believe in this one and we are really also continuing development to prove to the market that vacuum is the best way we can, or best technology we want to use for generator application. So without further ado, um, as no, I speak quickly about what are we doing Siemens on the market of, of generator circuit breakers. Let's have a look on the HB1C. And before uh, going on the HB1C, I would like to introduce you um, to our portfolio because we had our colleagues earlier speaking about what is uh, a GCB, how this GCB has to fulfill some specific standard requirement due to its location and vicinity close uh, to the generators. Then we had Ong speaking about some, some new application where we are quite successful together with some partners to sell this GCB on the market and installing them in, in synchronous condenser. But also it's important for me today to introduce you quickly what is our portfolio um, because it's, uh, we are very proud of it, so it makes sense. Um, now, looking at the portfolio, as you can see here, we have a quite wide portfolio covering needs of, of uh, power plants from, let's say, 50 megawatts per unit, even lower, up to 450 megawatts as a power plant. And if we translate that into some kind of rated nominal current um, and, and, vol and short circuit breaking current, we see that we are able to cover needs in terms of rated nominal current up to 15,000 amps. And as I mentioned earlier, we have our vacuum interrupters, which is allowing us to break short circuit current up to 110 kA. Of course, here being a part of the medium voltage application, we have rated voltage up to 24 kV. As you can see, we have a quite various range here of product coming from a redrawable product with a very high LSC, compatibilization, um, to some very customized products as the VB1, which is a medium voltage cell switchgear. And then also one of the flagship product we have today on the market, which is the HB3. Uh, so HB3 is made to be installed together with uh, what we call IPB, so insulated phase bus, and for very high power plant rating up to 400 megawatts. But today what makes sense for me to, to introduce, or why I'm here today, is to speak to you about the HB1C. As you can see here, the HB1C is uh, what we call a GCB without enclosure, meaning that the main, um, let's say, market for the GCB is to be installed either in an MV cell or a middle voltage switchgear, or to be installed in a power plant directly in a room which will be closed by fence or by door. But this will not come with any enclosure around it to protect him. Uh, let's have a look deeper. So um, HB1C, what we speak when we uh, mention about HB1C and the main performance. So as you can see here, 
on, on the slides, an HP1C is made from, uh, it's a system, it's a solution, it's not only a GCB or a component. So we are going from a component perspective, which is what was a generator circuit breakers, to a solution, which is um, more than just a GCB. As, you, as I will show you later on, this G HB1C is made of a GCB, a line designators, two earthing switch, but also together with a frame steel support, you can see here, some cables from the GCB, which are connecting those, um, yeah, the GCB function to the control panel. And what we are calling today an HB1C is this complete, solu this complete solution we are delivering, let's say, as a kind of um, turnkey to our customers where we have the braking component, we have the steel frame structures, we can help then the equipment to be installed either directly on the floor or on the wall. I remember it was one of the questions we had uh, earlier in the chat. And then from this component or this active part of the solution, we have to connect them to, let's say, the brain of the solution, which is then the local control cabinet. And this is overall the solution we are delivering to the market. Looking at the performance, uh, here, as I mentioned, we speak about uh, GCB rated up to 24 kV manual voltage solution. We have up to 6.7 thousand amps as a rated neutral current at 50 Hz. We have also braking capabilities up to 72 kA with a withstand of 3 seconds. Uh, what makes this HB1C unique, and that will be, you will hear me uh, saying that a lot in the coming slide, is the flexibility of the product. So we have designed this product with uh, having in mind the retrofit market. Our wish was to bring to the market something that no one did before, meaning that we wanted to bring something which was flexible and will support our customers to replace their hedging, outdated GCB with something new and they will get more but also having in mind that when it comes to a power plant, you don't want to come to the power plant and disrupt too much the power plant, whether it's um, time needed to do the replacement or if it's to change and adjust the bus bar routing or, or the room size. You want to be able to fit in with minor, minor not to say no, um, no say modification. And that's why I will go back to these uh, two points when we called our GCB HB1C, which has different type of configuration, whether we call it L-shape or I-shape, and I will come to this point right after. And also in terms of installation, so this HB1C can be installed either in the horizontal version, as you can see here on the slide, or it can be also installed vertically directly on the wall or with its own frame structures. Of course, we are following uh, the dual, dual logo standard, sorry, uh, which has been introduced by Fabian earlier. And again, just to give you some more, let's say, background, where we come from, why we believe in this uh, equipment, and why also we get some very good feedback from the market developing this equipment. It was because of what you have in front of you. So what we have in front of you is um, whenever, whether you are MV cell manufacturers, whether you have this at site, whenever in the past you wanted to have not only a generator circuit breakers, but you want to have some more equipment together with this one. So let's speak about a main disconnectors or a line disconnectors in line with your GCB, which will allow like a visual disconnection. Because when a GCB is open, whether you speak about minimum oil, whether you speak about air blast, whether you speak about uh, vacuum or SF6 ones, you cannot access directly visually that the contact within the arcing chamber are open. And how you do this, how you can prove to your maintenance team which will work on the generators that the contacts are physically open one of the good ways of doing this is to incorporate in your main current pass these line disconnectors. That's the blue part we can see today on, on the slide. So when you want to incorporate these line disconnectors, then you have to buy, or in the past, you had to buy a separate equipment and connect it with your GCB. And you see here between the generator circuit breakers, which is shown in red, and the disconnectors, which is shown in blue, you have some extra piece of, of bus bar, which is this inclination bus bar we have here. Or it could be also flexible uh, bread connection. And then you will also see that on, on both sides of the disconnectors and the GCB, we have what we are calling earthing switch. Again, here it's all related to personal safety at sites that whenever you have someone working to prevent any, any fault or issue with personal safety, you want to get your uh, main current path grounded. This will uh, yeah, preserve your personal working on, on the life path or being approached by, by the voltage. Uh, again, here in the past, if you had or if you had a wish to incorporate such kind of devices, you will have no other choice than to purchase them as a standalone component and try at site to connect them properly. And as you can see from this, uh, this picture here, and maybe later on, much more visual for you when you will be able to compare it with the HP1C, is all these components are standalone. And in the past, they could also be all type tested based on their own yeah, standard, let's say. 
Uh, and today we were also trying to change that to say, well, we are saying this component, this component are all installed into a kind of GCB application, GCB system. Uh, it should mean that we should try to test them all together to be sure that they are all working properly whenever they are in interconnected together. So that's what we have done. In always in the mind of trying to get it more compact, get it more uh, efficient, I would say, in terms of material, because there also is a point of how can we uh, you have to optimize the material we are using and delivering to customers. So here, have a look here on what we had in the past and what the HV1C we think is solving. So changing or moving, I would say, from a standalone approach to a highly integrated approach. So what we have done here, as you can see, we took all the different components, which were before standalone, and we tried to mount them around yeah, the heart of the system or the center part, which is, in our case, the neural circuit breakers, we are used to call 3 h which is one of the flagship components we have on, on our range, which is, again, bringing and, and delivering yeah, a lot of benefits to our customers. So around this heart, we bring directly on the terminals uh, a disconnectors, and then, again, integrating the earthing switch. And as you can see, the concept we come with is almost saving a third of the lens, um, maybe a bit less than a third, I'd say a quarter of the lens, which is then even more compact. We are now also being able to get rid or avoid the use of interface bus bar between each and every different component, and they are all mounted on the same structures. Let's call it a, a module. Um, one of the advantages we also believe is this equipment you are seeing today, HB1C, has been uh, tag tested together. So all the short time current, uh, all the data equipment are all being type tested with this equipment. So you don't have to look left and right to find the right type test for this different equipment. Here you have one equipment which is type tested together, which is of course assembled and routine tested together with a common control panel. So it's a kind of all-in-one solution bringing, I would say, the most of each and every part. And I just mentioned that we use this type of uh, module assembly so we use that before in the past for HB3C equipment. I invite you to look also on our web page for the HB3C. We have a kind of uh, configuration tool which can also help you to better understand the HB3C. Um, we have this approach at Siemens to develop the module approach because for us, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's bringing into a, a system all the advantage of having different system, different performance. So um, what is no mention is as a module, it's a part nowadays of the definition you can find in the dual logo standard. I, I took here the opportunity to copy paste it from the standard what the module assembly definition is. Um, on Siemens side, what we see or what we want to bring to the market as benefit for the module, call it module, is that as all components, disconnectors, earthing with and GCB are interconnected together, are integrated on the same function, are all type tested and routine tested together. This is really a way for us to provide to the market, again, with some very high level of reliability, but also, of course, getting it more compact and getting, let's say, getting less material. So always better in terms of footprint of the market, or CO2 footprint on the, on the market. This said, I will know step in much further in terms of uh, technical performance and also having some focus on uh, why we believe in vacuum technology and why we believe also that this HV1C, when we have vacuum technology coupled or together with a spring mechanism as a GCB, is really um, helping you to be more efficient at your power plant and um, keeping track of your OPEX or at least reducing them drastically. Um, and before doing that, of course, I would like to introduce you about the different configurations. So I mentioned earlier that we have different type of uh, configuration for the HB1C, trying to fine tune them about uh, the existing and legacy equipment. So what we have done before designing the HB1C, we looked at all the different type of GCB which were installed on the market since the 70s till, uh, till now. And we tried to make it that our HB1C has to be designed to be smaller than in equipment, meaning that we want to be able 100% to fit in the existing footprint of your power plant without having to modify it. And to do so, we also realize that by playing with some kind of configuration, some kind of physical arrangement of our HP1C, we will be able to support this. So you will see here what I'm showing is what we are calling the eye shape, and I refer to this all along the way to my presentation. Eye shape meaning that you have in the same axis the generators, 
circuit breaker and the line disconnectors. So that's what you can see here. In the same axis, the X axis, you have your GCB and your line disconnectors. And then on both sides, we have the earthing switch. So here in this configuration, we have the I shape, which is then installed on the frame for horizontal installation. Um, of course, as I mentioned earlier, we have two different types of installation. One is, as mentioned here, horizontal, but we also can use this HB1C vertically. That's kind of very useful when we speak about hydro power plant, when we have the generators at the bottom of the cavern, and we have all the bus bar or IPB going up to the GSUT, generator transformers, and then we have to either implement or replace a GCB then we can use this vertical installation, trying to avoid to have the bus bar going with some elbows and, and C-shaped bus bar to recover the fact that some GCB are not able to be installed uh, vertically. That's also there are some kind of uh, yeah, benefit going with vacuum. Uh, I will come back on this later. And as I mentioned, so again here we have an I shape. The reason why we have again in the same axis the GCB and the line disconnectors. So here in that case we have an I shape installed vertically. But as I mentioned, we have also the L shape. So the L shape is here. And as you can see, we have a 90 degree angle between um, the GCB and the disconnectors. And this L, L shape is really made to be able to fit mm, the size, the full width is, is lower. We also have in some existing power plants, the bus bar coming from the top, leaving from the top. So having an L shape was really a way for us to continue supporting the customer to say, okay, how can we replace existing breaker by a module which comes not only with a GCB but with extra function but still fitting in the existing footprint, meaning minimum disruption at site, whether it's a time of effort of changing. And that's today our answer. Then when you look at the, at the performance of the GCB, so as I mentioned here, the GCB we are using, which is really the part where my colleagues were speaking um, a lot about this today, it's we are using it, you can find it on the internet, it's called the free h 37 that's, that's really the core, the heart of our HB1C, which is a well-proven technology. Um, this is, I will answer also one question here. So the vacuum interrupters, the dry mechanism, the GCB, the main part is all made from Berlin, Germany. And that's also something we are very proud of. So all my colleagues here and myself included, we are sitting in the factory. So this equipment is really like um, the babies of, of the colleague. We are all kind of big family trying to, to deliver this to the market. And that's also why we are always trying to, to fine tune it. So we really bring and we're very proud of what we're delivering to the market. Um, so quickly, here's the performance. Uh, I think earlier today was some question about the DC component. So you can see it here, 70% for the system source fault, which is quite um, impressive and of course type tested. And uh, before jumping to the mechanical part of the GCB, I would like to have a short stop on the vacuum interrupters. Um, so what makes a huge difference, I would say, between us on the market when it comes to such performance is uh, the vacuum technology. Uh, if you are used to deal with generator circuit breakers, you will see that in the past we had some uh, steps in the technology which were used on the power plant. I would say everything started in the 60s, 70s with air blast technology, uh, which was coupled also with automatic drive mechanism. Then we moved from air blast to some case minimum oils, then we from minimum oils to some case SF6, and I would say today from SF6 to more sustainable solution in one case, which could be vacuum interrupters. And as you can see here, uh, we're not using vacuum interrupters just to be more sustainable. Uh, we are using vacuum interrupters because it brings to our customers a lot of advantage. One of them is being uh, the maintenance-free approach. Um, the I vacuum interrupters has a short, has been proven to being uh, sealed for lifetime. We don't have any moving components. We don't have any seals inside, which will wear and create some leakage. It's still for lifetime, meaning whatever our customers get and delivered by us, it will be yeah, maintenance-free until the end of lifetime. And when we say maintenance-free, this is also linked to what we are calling the mean time to failure. So today we have a mean time to failure on our vacuum interrupters up to 83,000 years. Meaning that that's a proof, of, let's say a seal of quality to say whatever equipment you get from us, you get from Siemens. When it comes to arcing chamber, which is one of the most, um, let's say, precise, sensible, sensitive element in the GCB, we at Siemens are giving you one of the most reliable solutions, one of the most sturdy, durable solutions on the market. And this MTTF is really a proof of it. Um, and on the top about the maintenance-free solution, so when we say maintenance-free, it's just like 
it's maintenance free until it's, it's not anymore. So meaning that we are able not only to give it maintenance free, but also to provide you with a very high durability. And this durability here is mentioned uh, at the bottom. So with the vacuum interrupters, we are able to interrupt the full rated current 10,000 times, which is almost, I would say, if I compare to others today, it's almost 10 times more. So when we go with offering vacuum interrupters, it's because it brings to the market the most durable and the most durable sturdy solution we can find. And that's also why we are still continuing and, and not changing, I would say, our IC development to go from vacuum to some other technology. It's really, we believe in vacuum and we think it's also bring to the market what the market expects, especially when it comes to maintenance free. Uh, now, having a look on um, the breaker. So, the circuit breakers is made of two things. On one side, the arcing chamber, on the other side, the drive mechanism. I think I just mentioned about the vacuum interrupters, which is there to open and clear the fold, but without um, a drive mechanism, it will not do anything. Um, as you can see here, oh, I will just show this one. So M3, yes. So as mentioned by Fabian, we have tight tested the equipment based on the latest standard. We are able to bring to the market one of the most <laughs> durable equipment, not only in terms of mechanical opening. So when I said these vacuum interrupters can interrupt 10,000 times the open, the rated current, sorry. Then I'm really here to speak about the contact system and the bottle itself. But again, if you want to be able to open this contact system 10,000 times, you have to get the mechanical linkage and the drive mechanism, which also yeah, push and open operates these vacuum interrupters. And for us, of course, it was very important to select and to use the most durable, sturdy, reliable, how you want to call it, a drive mechanism. And for that, we were helped, let's say, by uh, the Sigre. So what we have done and what Cement is doing since years, it, uh, we are developing our own full spring drive mechanism. Today, the HV1C has the complete range of circuit breakers, general circuit breakers we have. They are all equipped with full spring drive mechanism. Uh, the reason why we are doing this, it's again, to bring this level of um, durability and, and sturdiness to the market. We want to bring an equipment uh, and GCB, I think my colleague mentioned, but GCB are all, is always seen by our power plant owners, by maintenance team, has a kind of insurance for your power plant. And you want your insurance to work at any time. And you want your insurance to be reliable. And as such, when it comes to a GCB, you want to be sure that the GCB, anytime you need it, whether it's for opening or closing the condition or opening on fault condition, you want it to operate properly and to clear the fault, if any. And to operate properly, you need to get, of course, a good quenching method, but of course, a drive mechanism. Here, um, I mentioned here an extract of the Sigre report. You can find also on the internet. Uh, mainly what this report, this final report is stating is that uh, we can do some link between the reliability of high voltage circuit breakers, drive mechanism, and the generator circuit breakers, drive mechanism, because they are quite, quite similar in terms of construction. And they are looking to say, well, if we look then about this uh, big picture of the high voltage circuit breakers and GCB, we see that the major failures, what we call major failure, are always being coming from the drive mechanism. And so it's really important to avoid major failures to select a drive mechanism which will minimize, or well, yeah, to a minimum, uh, let's say, um, this, um, this possibility of failures. And why going through, the SIGRE went through the different reliability report of different manufacturers based on different type of uh, drive mechanism. And I mean, you can mention it here, it's mentioned that we have, they have a look on full springs, they have a look on pneumatic, I think, some hydromechanical. And what the SIGRE report is stating that when it comes to GCB, or even I think high voltage because one of the most reliable way to operate this GCB and to minimize the major failures happening at your power plant is to use the full spring mechanism. And once more, that just emphasize why we believe that coupling the vacuum interrupters or vacuum technology together with a drive mechanism is a way to deliver to our customers one of the most durable equipment to the market. So really focusing on what makes the heart of this HB1C, we again focus on what can we bring to customers which make a lot of sense and, and that our customers can use for the 20, next 25, 30 years without worrying about it. So that was the view on, on the GCB. Now, quickly going through the disconnector. So as you can see here, I bring some data about the disconnectors. What you can uh, see, which is quite important, is this uh, insulating distance. So the rated voltage and rated power resistance voltage across insulating distance. Again, as here, we were doing and, and yeah, initiating our own type test. We were able to fine tune and to select 
uh, properly the detonators, so it fulfills the requirement of the dual logo standard. That was very important for us. And again, here you can see the M3 uh, durability class or endurance class on the disconnectors. And just to also explain you quickly how it closed. So in that case, here you have the disconnector in closed position. And whenever you want to do some maintenance or whenever you want to have this visual opening of the main current pass, because on one side is a terminal, on the other side also, as you can see here, I cannot say whether my GCB, my arcing contact in my vacuum bottle are open or not. It could be they are open, could be they are closed. Visually, from this, from this location, I cannot say. A good way to say it is to open the disconnector. Which brings me also to the earthing switch uh, function. So, here, earthing switch, again, I just want to use this slide. Um, you will see the main performance. They are all summarized in our flyers. You can find in the download section of the webinar. Here, again, it's just to explain you quickly how we have this earthing switch coming. And here, for example, on this picture, what you can have is a kind of HB1C, which will be in his maintenance position for the generators, meaning that we have earthing switch which are bringing the current path to the ground, so people can work properly on, on the generators, for example, and disconnector open. So that was uh, one point. Then I will uh, quickly uh, go through the main dimension. Uh, as I mentioned, that we will really, imp it was, sorry, very important for us to have an equipment which was compact. So here you can have some very gross um, estimation of what is today the length, width, and height of our HB1C module in the I-shape condition. Uh, on the other side, what I want to emphasize that uh, our GCB is full spring operating, operating mechanism but the disoriented switch and the earthing switch are motor operated and the location of the drive mechanism can be on either side of the module. It could be on the left side, looking from the generator side, on the right side. It's really up to customers to discuss with us and to find the best solution which will fit their needs. And of course, I have the same slide with the L-shape um, with the same kind of flexibility. Again, here you see that the lens is uh, smaller and again here the, w the aim was to bring this system uh, to the market being able to fulfill even even more. Mm. Ah, sorry for that. <laughs> uh, then uh, closing with some, um, some data. So I will try just to summarize quickly what we really want to bring or what if there was some, uh, not yet the key takeaways, but some uh, specificities and flexibilities we think and, and we, I would say, today we experience also are the one where the market is coming to us. Is on one side, as I said, we are using this module assembly approach, which is now a, a part of the IEEE in its definition. Um, how we see that has a benefit is mainly because when you are assembling all these components under what I call this uh, workshop condition, it makes sure that it's much more, yeah, interacted together much better than if you then only at site start to couple equipment together, interconnect equipment together, then you are safe. All is type tested, all is routine tested, all is delivered as a solution with all equipment already integrated and interconnected together. Um, on the other side, we want to bring flexibility, so it's a standard solution, yes, but it has to be flexible. Why it has to be flexible is because we don't have um, one old legacy GCB type to be replaced. So here we speak, as I mentioned before, we had in the past some air blast breakers, some minimum oil breakers, some SF6 breakers, which are now reaching the end of life. And it's up to us, Siemens, to provide the right equipment to the market so our customers are able to select from us an equipment to customize it a little bit and then to install it, uh, let's say, peace of mind in their, in their power plant which also link to, to get more. So what we were also thinking is uh, initially we could also thought, well, we have a free H37, which is a GCB as is. Why not to just use this GCB and, and not bother that much about having more equipment around? We want to do this uh, because of personal safety. We believe that even though in the past, the size of our equipment was much bigger than today, when we speak about GCB, when we speak about arcane chamber, in the past it was very bulky equipment. Today, with vacuum, we are able to be very small, very compact. Um, I would say vacuum circuit breakers are one of the most compact on the market, especially when you look at the HB1C, the HB3C, or the 3H37. And here, with an HB1C, what we are able to do, and I will come to that with the business uh, case, is we are able to replace an old, I would say, single function equipment, like an old general circuit breakers, which was only, yeah, already a lot of things, but clearing the fault. And installed in the same footprint, a fully equipped system, meaning that you have a GCB, you have a disconnecting switch, and two earthing switch, meaning that you are improving your safety level to 
normal, let's say two days standard. And that's kind of priceless for customers, which are looking for yeah, how I can work better. So I don't have to do the earthing switch manually. I can only operate the motors. This is all interlocked together. So that really help our customers to be to work safer, I would say. Um, I mentioned earlier, we are maintenance free. Um, I can go further on that, I think, for hours. But uh, really here, what the main point is, is um, we are not maintenance free for being maintenance free. We are maintenance free because it helps our customers to save money. So this is really the point here at Siemens. And that's also why on the top of making some short circuit simulation, we are doing this life cycle cost approach, which is ready to show you that based on your own equipment, based on your own operating condition, that's where I think that's the kind of yeah, money we can save you over the, 10, the next 20, 25 years if you go with vacuum. Um, then one-to-one -one interface. Um, as I mentioned, we are doing standard equipment, but we are always customizing them so they fit perfectly at site, meaning that we want to come to a, yeah, a very small distribution site, not changing equipment, so we can come with our solution and install it directly. A bolt-on approach is very important for us. So when we are mixing both or we are developing both like one-to-one -one interface with bolt-on approach, it means, and you will see it in the business case, that we are able to take the old GCB out and bring the new GCB in with almost no modification on the middle voltage, meaning that the bus bar, the flexible breads, the full print on the ground will remain the same. You just have to take the old GCB out, put the new one, and you are able to, let's say, uh, I will not attempt Android, but you can get more with this decoding switch and earthing switch. Of course, as mentioned, we also took the opportunity to be able to supply all this equipment together to fine tune the interlocking approach, meaning that all the equipment will be delivered on the module will be interlocked together. And last but not least is, of course, the F-gas-free systems. Um, nowadays, we have much more stress, I would say, on the F-gas worldwide. And this is even more true in Europe when we have some new regulation coming, which is today is not ex say extended to the GCD application. It will be soon there for the minimal voltage application, uh, whether we speak about primary GIS or secondary GIS switch gear. And we don't know what the futures will be. And that's also why on the top of having this impact in terms of CO2 footprint on with the SF6, uh, we believe that going to the market with some kind of uh, F-gas free solution is really the white right way to, to make it. So that was also very important for us at Siemens to emphasize this point. Uh, so this was mainly it when it comes to the product. And I will take the next, uh, I think, fourth slide to drive you through a very quick uh, business case. So uh, what we call retrofit. So quickly before starting with the retrofit, um, just to have the common understanding. So we have a common ground. To, to discuss together later on, I will say, is what we are calling retrofit. So retrofit or replacement is, or implementation is just like you have an existing power plant, you have an existing switch gear, and you want to replace or you want to improve some equipment. And by doing so, you are increasing your performance, reducing your OPEX and, and so on and so forth. So that's where we think HV1C is quite um, powerful. And I will show you that with the first example. So in this first example, uh, we have been asked by our customers to provide some kind of solution to replace an old air blast breaker. Uh, this breaker was installed almost more than 30 years ago. And as you can see here, we have, uh, let's say, get some feedback from customers. Why do you want to change it? What's, what's the hurdles you are facing with? And he said that, well, so equipment is now aging quite a lot. So every day which is passing, it's elevated risk of, of malfunction, of, of issue coming with this. I have maintenance costs, which are now rising up. And also what was important for them is that they are very hard time to understand what the futures will be. How can I access spare parts? How can I access technical expertise, which will help me to solve some issue on my breaker? So locally, the maintenance team was able to do some specific basic maintenance on the breaker, but they were not able to solve issue if those issues were coming. And GCB being in the current path of the generators to the GSUT, if your GCB is not working, then our customers are not able to deliver the energy to, to the grid. So it's a loss of revenue for our customers, but most, uh, let's say, it could be also very tricky for the grid. So Hong mentioned about synchronous condensers. So nowadays we have some grids which are really stressed about having some fluctuating loads on the grid and, and, and poor generation. So it's very important for our customers to have being to, sorry, to be able to produce energy whenever they are asked. And having an old GCB um, is sometimes uh, too much risky for them. So when the customers came to us, as you can see here, he had only a GCB at site with a disconnectors on the top uh, right corner of the MV cell. 
to say, okay, Siemens, uh, what can you do for me? Is there any ways you can have a solution which will improve my performance and reduce my risk? And also anything else, <laughs> you let me know. So we came up with this solution. Um, as you can see here, it's not only an edge warranty, it's an edge warranty plus. So that's where we are very good at is um, how from a standard solution, we can extend this solution to make it fitting to our customers. What you can see here, it's a HB1C on some kind of skid, which is the blue part, which is supporting the HB1C to have it at the same level as the existing, let's say, bus bar interface. And then the issue we're facing also is, well, our HB1C was too small. It's like, <laughs> I mean, I like to have this kind of issue rather than too big because at least we, we fit in. And here what we have done to go from the HB1C terminals to connect our new GCB terminals to the existing power plant, we use what we are seeing here in orange, this interface bus bar. And then to be able to be, as I mentioned, a one-to-one -one interface, like you take the old one, you put the new one, we have managed to create the, these terminals, which were at the exact same location and dimension as the old one. So in fact, for our customers, what you will get is a, a complete turnkey solution where you can get this old GCB out and put our new GCB in it will be even able to reuse the flexible connection. Meaning that when you have this kind of solution at site, it's a really minimum site disruption. You are also improving your time for replacing the equipment. You are also, let's say, not modifying your existing components. So that's also very important for our customers. When they have some type tested MV cell, type tested switch gear, they want to have a minimum modification so they can still have their certification on some other uh, regulation which could apply. And that's also important for us. So the minimum modification we have, the better it is for our customers. And then it all comes to benefit for our customers. Less outage time, so I can do this modification faster. Uh, I can also use similar equipment for this cell to, to another one. I have a small GCB, it can fit almost everywhere. So that was really important for us to have this approach to customers, always looking at a one-to-one -one replacement. And then I have another example here, which is a draft here. Uh, which is coming to say we could also have what we are calling implementation. Implementation means you see on the picture on the right, we have on the top a bus bar running. Um, our customers having in the past only a line distributors, but he was willing to install a GCB. The main reason is he want to be, let's say, <laughs> responsible of connecting the GCB to the, to the grid and not leaving that to the substation. Uh, by doing so, he was in need of having a GCB installed, but he, will, he was willing to keep the disconnecting function. It was very important for him to have a GCB, a disconnectors, and if possible, uh, he will do the earth thing um, say, by the motor. What we have done in that case, we came up with the HB1C as we are able to install it vertically. We mount it directly on the wall. You will have some connection on the top, some L shape of the bus bar, then uh, on the right and this GCB will be directly connected. And that's the kind of issue our customers was facing that he was not able to find any solution to the market. And I would say that was a very good business case for us to say, well, that's good to see that when we design something and we bring it to the market, the market is highly welcoming such initiative, such new design, you know, not to say innovation, because that's really fitting a demand on the market. And we believe that more or less in each and every power plant, we could have a, a good system to, to provide our HB1C. And now it's time to go back to the takeaways. Um, so again, time, yes, time is running. <laughs> uh, um, so as a takeaway, again, I will emphasize even more that we have this HB1C with integrated solution. It's a way for us to bring to the market a very high level of personal safety. We want to improve the way our customers are working on one side by improving the open ex expenditures, but on the other side, really pushing on personal safety, how you are able to work in more saf better safety condition. And having these systems where everything is type tested, routine tested together, interconnected together, and then delivered as a complete solution to the market is the way we are answering this concern. On the other side, as I said, we have also not to bring this equipment to the market and then asking our customers, okay, that's a good equipment, but you have to remove this wall or make this opening, or I cannot access to the final location. You have to widen the door. No, we want it to fit as a one-to-one -one with existing DCB. So our, let's say, specification for the design was, let's look at what has been installed in the power plant. Let's take the minimum dimension of all different existing DCB, and we have to fit inside. And that's, I think, what we have successfully done together with Fabian. And on the last part, uh, coming back to the low maintenance requirement, 
uh, I emphasize already maintenance free. So we have this HB1C has most of our range, which is maintenance free. HB1C in the case is um, drive mechanism up to 10,000 close operation maintenance free together, uh, coupled together with our VI interrupters. Again, here 10,000 times interrupt cycle at rate term. And just for, I would say, I hope it will not happen, but as you can see here, we have this uh, 30 interruption at full rated, full circuit current, meaning that the bottom we are using, um, we went to some type test and we had some, say, not some fun, I will not say that, but we run some type test having one bottle, um, yeah, experiencing to open 30 and even more times the full circuit current, just to prove, to show that, well, it's still working, it's still there, and um, when it comes to GCB, uh, our vacuum technology is something you can count on.